Hello guys, welcome back to the Davos 2 podcast. You just have me today, um, just a solo. It's pretty snowy out and the guest wasn't able to make it. So I just want to chat with you about uh, today. Um, today I have planned just a topic that I've been really interested in and that's time management. Let's get right into it. Time management, it can improve your academics, your social life and your overall psychological well-being. And myself and most college students aspire to get an education and a degree but time management is kind of the, the one task, the one tool, the one skill that if we can all master, um, it'll help us do better in all these things. Um, according to Cogent Education, time management actually correlates with well-being. So time management and how well you're able to do it and um, um, be good at it, um, it will actually attribute to how well you're doing. Um, and people with uh, a great well-being also generally do better academically. So the, uh, the state of your well-being, um, just how you're feeling, um, generally correlates to how you do in academics. Because if your mind can, be, can focus and uh, just actually focus on tasks instead of like if you're down, um, you do better with academics, which is interesting. So, yeah. Um, so let's look at exactly what time management is. Um, we want to work towards the mastery of it. It's something I've been working on. I've been, uh, I have a plan this year to read 12 productivity books, uh, just along with everything else going on. Um, read one book a month about uh, time management and we can get into some of the books that I will be reading as well. But first, um, kind of like, how do we, how do we approach time management? How do we approach learning this, this skill? And you just need to realize that time management is decision making and focus. Um, you need to be able to prioritize and discern what you need to do. And there are some methods of doing that. Uh, the Journal of U University Teaching and Learning Practice defines time management as self management with an explicit focus in time of deciding what to do, end quote. So we need to understand that whenever you're looking at all the tasks in front of you, uh, you just need to discern uh, it's difficult. You need to discern how much time it's going to take, uh, what time of the day it would be best for you to do. Um, there's some statistics out there of when um, you have the best retention when studying. Um, it's generally considered that in the afternoon is the worst time to retain stuff when studying for an exam or just for memory. Um, you want to study in the morning whenever you get up or later in the day, um, like after you eat until you uh, almost go to bed, like 7 to 10 p.m. So just discerning um, if you have this task, um, just determining how difficult it is and then how much time it will take. And then you can start planning it out with uh, point two. So there's one skill, one method that I like to use it's called the ABCD model. Uh, Kogan Page Limited presents it. It's uh, just helping you place all the tasks that you have into these specific bins. So ABCD. Those are the different bins that you have. So first you have A, these are your important tasks. These are all your tasks that one, have a very uh, soon deadline. And that could be uh, uh, different depending on your person. So if it's one week ahead, that could be a close deadline or it could be in a few hours and that could be a close deadline. Just depends on what time frame you like to work with. But A is for the number one most important task, studying for this exam. Oh, you have a quiz that you have to do by tonight, a paper that you have to turn in. Those are all important and very uh, time sensitive tasks. But that's where we move into B. So B is a little bit different. B, these are important tasks, um, but they don't have as difficult of a deadline ahead of them. So um, you may want to start working on it, but and you might want to pick little tasks from it, but it's not like necessary and do that day. So these could be tasks that you wouldn't even complete the day of, um, but um, you want to keep them on your mind in case you have some extra time if you were a little more efficient with all of the A tasks that you had planned. But next we move on to C. So these are uh, little tasks um, that are important, but they aren't as important as B or A, but they do have a little bit more of a deadline. So say, um, yeah, it's just a little quiz. It's going to be really easy. Um, and it's due in a few hours. It's just a C. So it's like, all right, this is going to be an easy assignment. It might take me five minutes, but I need to keep it on my mind because it might be due today or tomorrow. Uh, but then finally, you have D. These are honestly, it's just a way to organize everything that you have. All of the um, tasks that you put into the D bin 
um, they honestly, you wouldn't even have to do them. It's just to keep them on your mind so you can know that you have everything organized and to make sure that you know it's not an A or a B task. Um, B tasks are something like even doing laundry. Laundry is important. Like you need to do it every once in a while, but it's there's no deadlines. There's nothing surrounding like if you don't do it other than like if you have so much laundry that you have no clothes to wear. So D tasks are solely just to help with your organization. Um, and then after you go through this um, process, um, honestly, I really like to use Google Tasks for this. Google Tasks, um, there's a little descriptions you can put underneath the task name. So what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll actually create the task, um, say whatever the name is. I like to label it and then I'll say what the actual task is. So what it's for, say maybe one of my classes. Um, let's go marketing, principles of marketing class. Principles of marketing class, I have a quiz. So it's principles of, mar principles of marketing quiz. Um, and then below it, there's a description. So what I like to do in the description is I'll label it with an A. Um, that means it's an A um, importance, um, A bin task. So that means it's due pretty soon. It's very important. I need to do it. Um, and then I can put it in there. I can also uh, put a timeline of when I want to start on it. Um, so then you know, I'll actually pop on my Google calendar. I like to keep everything on Google in general. It's just a service I like to use the most. And so having that task there, you know it's important. And then it will ping you with a notification whenever you should start working on it. And it's just extremely helpful just to keep you um, on task. And also it's a very light, minimal and easy to use platform. There are some other task management platforms. I've used Trello. I've used um, Rike. Trello is very good. Rike is very in-depth and good, but you need to set up processes for it. Google Tasks is very baseline, and the biggest thing is it's free. So that's awesome. But now, so you have all your tasks organized. Um, the next step, and maybe even be more important, but it, the ABC model is very important is the OATS method. So this is a method of planning, O-A-T-S. So what O stands for is it's your objectives for the week. A is your activities. T is actually the realistic amount of time that you have. Then S is scheduling. So you go through all of these letters and this is a process of scheduling and you start from one, go to the end. So we'll start with objectives O. So O stands for objectives. And these are the things that you need to get done, the tasks that you have for the week, the goals that you have for the week. Um, these are all the things that you would like to get done. These are all the things you would like to go to socially, like if there are events. Um, and so these are just the goals that you have for the week. Because it's like, okay, I need to finish all these homework assignments. I need to go to all of these social events. And then I have all of these classes. Um, so it, you want to make sure that you can uh, just organize it in a way and just lay it all out there so you know what you have um, and you don't lose track of anything. So A is your activities. So these are actually your unmovable um, just events that you have to go to. So objectives, these are your tasks, all the things you would like to do, like to accomplish work-wise, school-wise. And then activities are all the events that you have um, So the, for class, um, for, um, I think you can put social activities in there as well, actually. So I say objectives is more for tasks. So I would say I misspoke on that. But um, A, activities, these are all the events, all the things that are not like in your control. They have their own specific time with other people. Um, so once you go through O and through A, you understand all the tasks that you have, you understand all the activities you have, and that's where you can move into the next phase, which is T. And this is just the realistic amount of time that you have in a week. So you figured out your objectives, you figured out your activities. Now you just need to figure out like how much time you have. What time do you have whenever you take all the classes that you have to be to, all of the uh, times that you honestly just need to eat food and all the times you need to sleep, how much time do you have left? So you look at the time that you have. You know you need to do some of these objectives and then you have some of these activities that you would like to go to. So then you move on to the final phase, which is S for scheduling. You need to schedule it out. You've under, you understand the objectives that you have, the activities you have, and now the realistic amount of time that you have after you push aside all the essentials, classes, food, and sleeping. Now, just schedule it out. You need to understand when you're going to do all your objectives, when you're going to go to all these extra activities, and that will allow you to be efficient so you can work on the objectives and you know you have a deadline, your own personal set deadline to actually um, 
do um, what you need to do, but also have fun, have your social life, and go to the same activities that you would like. So that is the OATS method. Um, I really like using this. Um, it's just very helpful um, just to allow myself to be efficient, get a lot done. I love working on a lot of things. I'm involved with a lot, uh, but I also do have a social life. Like I'm able to uh, do stuff with friends, uh, do stuff with colleagues, and but that's just because I've allowed myself time um, through this process. So one thing that's really cool too is um, you have, often in college you get this feeling of like, oh, I could be studying right now. Like I'm out Friday night with my friends, but it's like I feel like I should be studying right now. This eliminates that feeling when you're able to get all these things done and you understand like, oh, I did what I said that I need to do today and I have tomorrow to work on this other thing. I don't have to do it tonight. So I can be f feel fine whenever I'm going out with friends. I don't have to feel guilty like I'm not studying and that I might fail because I'm not studying right now. It gives you those set social times so you can fully enjoy it, be fully rejuvenated, ready to go. So time management, it's just important. I'm really passionate about it. I think it will truly improve your academics and your social life, just as well as your well-being. And uh, the ABCD model, um, that's where you go through all your tasks that you have and you put them in different bins. And you're doing this ABC model and using Google tasks, if you would like, in O, in the OATS uh, method. So in, whenever you're looking at your objectives, you can go through the ABCD model and then figure out the different objectives you have, estimate the times, and then you look into your activities, all the events you have throughout the week. You can look at all your classes, everything like that. Then you look at the time it will take to do everything. And then finally, you will schedule out your week. Um, so I, if this is a, uh, misspoke there, but yeah, so this is just exciting. Um, I hope this will help you guys um, with time management um, as you just learn the, the ways of college and figuring out how to be efficient in all the classwork that you're trying to do. Um, and yeah, I think it's uh, just an awesome that there's all these tools out here to figure it out. So this still just us. Um, I haven't had a solo podcast in a while. Um, there's a lot been going on here at Cedarville. Um, I've actually uh, been given the opportunity to present a video in chapel here at Cedarville. I'm editing one right now for the pitch. Um, but yeah, let's just go a little recap of what's been going on. Um, fall semester, haven't really talked about it. And then over the break and now into the spring semester. Um, but yeah, so far I've had the excellent opportunity to uh, work with the Plaster School of Business. I currently manage the social media for them, um, along with our team. I'm also involved with the organization Q. So what Q does, it's Cedarville University Entrepreneurship. And so we just want to inspire others, help others collaborate together, and build up entrepreneurs, um, regardless of major, and just help them build these businesses, uh, build these ideas that they have and so right now, I'm on a team. There's, it's four-person team right now, and we are working on our own idea um, to be presented in the pitch. The pitch is a it's a Shark Tank-like event uh, prevent, presented by Q, and it's really exciting. It was extremely fun back in the fall semester. I was on the video production team, just helping get as much content as we can from the event. And uh, so in 2024 here, the spring pitch, uh, February 2nd at 6 p.m. pre-show at 5.30. My team will pre be presenting an idea as well as other members of Q. So Q, we really push. Um, we want to help people efficiently, effectively, and just not take too much time um, building a business. Now, if you if it requires time, that's fine. But we don't want you to, to delay if you have other stuff going on. We want to help you and help you move it along. It's just a really exciting org. So if you're looking at Cedarville, looking at entrepreneurship, um, Gen Z is considered the entrepreneurial generation with over 84% of um, Gen Zers saying they want to be entrepreneurs. They want to change the world. Um, Cedarville University is really pushing it. And it's been exciting. Been able to work with the staff and just uh, dive into my own ventures, uh, working with uh, the creative branding um, video work, social media management, um, and I've had opportunities. I've had uh, clients that I've helped 
with their uh, social and digital presence, just with websites. Um, and it's really exciting. I really enjoy it. Um, and another thing that's been going on, um, we just got a boatload of snow today. Uh, we got like, well, it's only like four inches, but um, it's cold. It's been cold over the past week at Cedarville. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've had so many opportunities. It's really a blessing. I've had uh, many great guests. Uh, Cooper Peterson, he was the most recent guest. Aaron Perry, uh, Annie Alexander will be dropping. She actually might have, her episode is probably dropped before this one. Um, my roommate, Alex, uh, Braden Southland, who knows Pops. Um, David Cook from Papua New Guinea. Um, it was an exciting conversation with him. But yeah, it's been moving along. Uh, I've not quite reached my goal of uh, filming in every building. I did one in the SSC, uh, Stevens Student Center here. I've had three podcasts here now in the library, um, as well as a couple back in my dorm at Brock. And uh, I don't know, it's uh, it's kind of it's also kind of difficult. I realized to do a solo episode. I got two cameras, just kind of spouting off, talking about what I can. Um, I think what I might want to do is I'll run through some questions if we look here. Um, just some frequently asked questions of uh, Cedarville for new students. Um, I'm currently a freshman. This is my spring semester, so second semester here at the school. Um, got a little rope of things. Um, obviously, I don't have the experience of an old upperclassman, but I would really like to see if I can help you guys with anything. Okay, so one thing um, that I have really found and I've been uh, talking with a lot of classmates about in general um, is college credit. Um, whenever you talk about CLEP, AP credits, dual enrollment credits, credits, how do we get it to transfer? This was actually one of my first podcast episodes, episode one and two, um, where I went into depth on it. So if you want to watch that, it's fine, but I'll talk about it here as well. Um, so Cedarville is Christian University. So sometimes whenever we're looking at the, the credits that we're taking, specifically from a secular university, we need to look at the content of that course. Whenever we're looking at biology or uh, certain things with mathematics, um, anything that might have a difference whenever it comes to a secular and a Christian belief. So biology, obviously, um, the difference between Christ, um, the Christian belief in it and secular is just who created us, how do we begin, how we formed, and how we come to be what we are now and through what we've learned in science. So generally, I would say, whenever you're taking a science dual enrollment elective, CLEP test, AP credit, um, first there's a list. There's a list for all the CLEPs that will transfer and the specific scores that you need at Cedarville. Uh, Cedarville generally doesn't do the normal like 50 number that most colleges accept. Cedarville expects a higher number of their students. Uh, but whenever it comes to dual enrollment and AP credit, one thing that really helped me um, where I actually had every single dual enrollment credit that I took in high school to transfer over to Cedarville was I contacted the transfer office prior to even signing up to that class. So even as a junior in high school, I was taking classes at Liberty University which helps. I mean, we found out that Cedarville and Liberty transfer very well, which you also could look into, just finding different schools that transfer well into Cedarville. But understanding that, finding some research, but then contacting the transfer office prior to taking the course saying, hey, I want to take this course and you want to give as much info as possible, the actual course name, the course number, um, exactly like the description of it and how many credits it is and say, hey, does this class, let's say, college algebra count for this course that Cedarville offers that will then apply to my major. So that last statement is very important. So you could say in that statement, okay, hey, does this credit, college algebra, count for this credit that Cedarville um, gives? Yes. They could say yes, but you need to add that last sentence to make sure that it counts towards your major. That's an important distinction. So we have college algebra, and then we have their college algebra. But we need to make sure that it counts for a major because you could take that credit in and it could count, but it might not apply to your actual major. I don't know why. I don't know the specific reason for this, but we have found that with some of my older cousins and some people that I know that have gone to college, that you can actually take in credits, have a couple credits, but they actually don't apply to your major at all. 
So you need to make sure whenever you're writing that email, you have a template for every class that you're going to take. Hey, does this class, specifically this class, count for this class? And does it apply to my major? If you say those things prior to a class and then they say yes, then you are good to go. You can take it, take a screenshot of the email, and then you're good to go. You have proof of record that they said that to you. And then um, if they turn their back later or if they if there's some change, um, you'll just have that receipt. And then it's a smooth process. That way there's no confusion, there's no anger, there's no no frustration between the two sides. There's just it's a good process. You're going through it and you're being diligent. Do your due diligence and it, it will work out in general. Now, um, you might ask like, <clears throat> now you might ask, is this a Cedarville issue? Um, and I would say no. From my experience, um, Cedarville is actually fairly good with this. They are, their office is pretty nice. The people I've contacted have all been great. This is just a general academia. They have a lot to work with, with the government, with institution stuff, with trying to uphold standard. So um, it's really just working with them. Um, Cedarville wants to work with you. There are some colleges out there that want to work for you and work with you and help you through this, but you need to do your due diligence and uh, um, just making sure that you're always one step ahead, uh, making sure these count before you even take the class. Um, there's not one class that was dual enrollment um, that I took that I did not already go through the transfer office and say, hey, does this count towards my major? So I think that will just really help you guys um, set you up for success whenever it comes to uh, your college credits because this is important. We want to get the, the best experience when we're at college. So I came in with 21 credits. Um, and that just allowed me to not do as many gen eds as I needed to. I could focus on some major specific classes really early on. So my second semester now, I have uh, two major specific classes. I have a uh, principles of marketing and I have uh, creative problem solving. So these are two marketing major classes that I'm able to take already, which is awesome. So credits, a really important thing. Um, a few other things. The uh, major. So the next question is, what do I do if I want to change my major? I actually just went through this process, uh, like I believe yesterday or maybe two days ago. Um, I had a class. It didn't quite work with my major. It wasn't degree applicable. Um, so I needed to actually put, pick up a minor in order, <laughs> order to take this class. Uh, it's a simple process. The people at the registrar here at Cedarville are really awesome. Um, just go chat with them, say, hey, how, how can I work this out? And what I did is I then went in and changed my major or my minor, excuse me. So I have my major, marketing, and I'm taking a communication speech class, just to better uh, my speech. And um, they said, hey, if you could just pick up this minor, all you need to do is pick it up for this semester, and then yeah, you can take that course just uh, to better uh, your skills. So I picked up an organizational communication minor. Um, I don't know much about the minor, but it just helped me take that class. So I think just looking at ways to work around some stuff, not in an obviously unethical way, but just figuring out like, uh, how can I use a system that they've created and they've created it so I can learn. So you work with the people, registrar, transfer's office, all these people, and they specifically here at Cedarville, from my experience, they really genuinely want to help you. So don't be afraid to reach out. They're always willing and they're always uh, to help and they're always willing to communicate with you. Next, um, how can I change my schedule? So I've gone through the process of figuring out my classes, my schedule twice now. It's a little different fresh, freshman fall because you were given your own class schedule and you have to then change it after. You can't set it beforehand. And one thing I really found is just have a plan. Um, Cedarville has this four-year planner where you can plan out your year um, your semester and your entire four years and figure out what classes need to be in what year and what semester. And so I would highly recommend fill that out. If you know what your major is going to be. So I knew my major was going to be marketing. I took all the marketing specific classes, all the gen eds I still needed to take. And I just planned them out. Even if you're going to switch it up a little bit, have it planned out so you can just visualize it and understand what you need to do. And then Talk to your advisor about it. Uh, I have a, an amazing advisor, uh, Dr. Guernsey, um, even though I'm a marketing major, he, he's a great guy. And he was like, man, you got a plan, go for it. Do what you need to do. I, I'm gonna leave it in your hands. And so he's given me the opportunity to just kind of take control of my schedule 
because I had a plan and I vocalized it with him. We talked through it and he agreed with it. So I think just coming up with this plan, this confidence of like, hey, this is what I need to do. I know this will work. And then just making sure it will all work. You need to make sure that you can make it into the right sections so the timeline works out. And uh, but that's the biggest thing. Have a plan with your schedule. Talk to your advisor about it. And they may even give you the reins for it. And so I think uh, just being prepared is the biggest thing. And you kind of see that as a theme. Being prepared, diligent, having a plan. That's what you need uh, to succeed at college. Um, and it's not too hard. It's really just putting your mind, if you're going to college, you have the mind to do this. Um, so it's awesome. So now some other questions, they don't really apply too much. Let's do, um, let's see services here. Yes, yeah, so Cedarville, um, uh, if you don't know too much about it and you actually haven't heard about it until this podcast, uh, their big thing um, is a thousand days transformed. You're here at school for about a thousand days. Uh, you get an exceptional academics with uh, a biblical worldview. Uh, you're actually required to have a Bible minor. So, I, like if I quote unquote kept my minor of organizational communication, I would have a marketing major, a communication minor, and a Bible minor. Um, so, it's really cool. There's uh, five courses that you have to take that are related to the Bible. As of now, in 2024, they are called. Uh, the Bible and the Gospel, Old Testament, New Testament, Theology 1, and Theology 2. Um, so they really just push to make sure that you grow your spiritual life, um, especially with chapel. Um, chapels every day, 10 o'clock, Monday through Friday, so five days a week. Um, I, always enjoy, I always enjoy chapel. Sometimes it can feel like a drag, but that's whenever you really just understand, like, okay, they're making us do this for a reason, and... You go and have fellowship and you worship. That's always exciting. Um, so now oh, here's a few more questions. Let's, let's get into them. So how do I figure out which classes I should take? When can I register for classes? And how do I search for classes in current and future terms? Interesting. So this is kind of along the same thing. I think this is an issue a lot of people deal with is just figuring out classes because obviously mm -hmm. classes cost money and you only have a certain amount you can take each semester to graduate. You can only take about 12 to 17 as a business major before you pay overtime or if you're a part-time student. Um, so what classes should I take? There is a course catalog presented by Cedarville. It's all the courses that they offer for the major at that moment i think that i don't know how often they update it review it. it might be yearly i'm unsure but that is what i would recommend looking at and i would recommend printing it out you don't have to print out the whole thing but specifically your degree and all the classes in it and the descriptions of those classes i'd highly recommend uh, printing it out i have a full copy of the entire thing just so i can look at it and visualize it I really like i really like paper so i can just write stuff and work on it there and uh so i have that i brought that into my advisor meeting I brought in uh, the book. I brought in my specific page that I had written out with all the notes that I had about my major. And there you can see all the classes as well as their recommended four-year plan or three-year plan if you're doing a three-year option for marketing specifically. Um, so you can kind of base your stuff around that. Now, you can always change it around a little bit because sometimes you won't even be able to do what the school recommends. What the school recommends might not work simply because of how they schedule the classes. So it might be in your junior fall. Um, two classes are literally at the same exact time. You just simply cannot do that. So you got to figure out how to work it around a little bit. And so that's why I say you build it out to the four years, but understand it will definitely not be how you planned it out simply because of scheduling and the different sections and how many people are going to take that class in that semester and just how many profs are available at that time. So, um, yeah, and I think I think that's kind of a recurring theme. It's like people are trying to figure out their classes, what they should do, how to go about it. And it's just research, figuring it out, search online. Let's go course, catalog, Cedarville University. And so it's a PDF, um, 2023 undergraduate academic catalog. And then you can go in, uh, you can look at it and... Uh, yeah, I'm not, I don't think, I'm not sharing my screen. I won't share my screen right now, just so I don't bother you guys. But it's, uh, they have the resources out there. That's one thing. It's like a mindset you generally want to take whenever you are 
in a class getting ready for college is even if it sucks and even if there's some annoying things that go on, you're frustrated, the best attitude I would argue that you should have is the information is out there. The reason for this is out there. I just need to find it and I haven't found it yet. You don't want to go into a class, say you're in a class with a professor and you miss this one assignment or you miss interpret this one thing you don't understand what's going on you do something wrong and you feel like oh, it's the professor's fault they they didn't explain it right they didn't put it out on the syllabus they didn't put it in canvas or whatever uh, learning platform that you use it's a professor's fault but i'd say that's the wrong attitude to take whenever you're going about it the best attitude you can have because that's not the attitude you want to take into the workplace oh it's my boss's fault it's all their fault they're not leading me well they aren't giving me the right things that could be true in some instances, but that's not the attitude you should take. The best attitude to have is always, it's probably my fault. Did I not look at this one thing? Am I not doing my due diligence? Um, am I um, overlooking this one thing? Did I miss this one thing? Did I write down the wrong notes? If you, come, if you have this mindset that it was your fault or you just missed something, that's the best attitude to have. That can help you understand what the problem is and actually fix it instead of dwelling on um, something you can't even control. Because say the professor does something, they make a mistake, which happens. Communicate with them. But first, you need to understand and make sure and be sure that it might have been their mistake. You don't want to go to them and email them and say, hey, I think you did this wrong. And then they're like, no, look at this. Boom. They didn't do it wrong. You just missed something. That's kind of an embarrassing and awkward situation to have. And then just like the respect of you a little bit will go down. Not that they will respect you less, but there's just like little moments like that that will build up. But if you keep showing that like, oh, okay, I'm unsure, I'm unsure of this one thing. I'm going to dig a little deeper. I'm going to research. I'm going to figure it out. And then once you've done your due diligence, there's either two things that will happen. You find out, yes, I missed something or the professor missed something. And then at that point, if you email them, contact them and say, hey, I think you missed this one thing, they'll come to you and say, hey, thank you. Um, I didn't realize that. Thank you for doing the due diligence. And if they're a good professor, they care about you and they really want to work things out, they will. Um, thank you for that and be appreciative that you did the due diligence and are working on this class and being collaborative. This is how you want to be in the workplace. You want to be collaborative, solve problems, and they don't want you to just complain and say, oh, it's somebody else's fault. So I think that's the best attitude to have whenever you're taking a class, whenever you're trying to get ready for college, um, whether there's an annoying phase that's happening or it's like, oh, man, this is crazy. Like, I don't really like, uh, personally, I don't like syllabuses that are like on some PDF or some Word document um, that you have to take on a link outside of the learning management system that we use. That is Canvas. Um, I really like it whenever the profs put it all in the Canvas. You can see it all. You can put it to your Google Calendar really easy. Um, but not every professor do, does that. Um, a lot of my professors in the fall did do that, which was really helpful. Um, but a lot of my professors this spring actually don't do that. So it's kind of a learning curve. Um, I forgot of a quiz. I showed up to class like, oh, geez, we have a quiz. I have not read anything. But um, I did find the quiz, which is okay. But um, that was my issue. I didn't read the syllabus correctly just because there's a little overload of information. I wasn't doing my due diligence. <laughs> And so um, there's no reason to get mad at the professor for that. That's just my issue. I, I miss that, and that's okay. You just figure it out. Uh, make it up next time. Um, it's early in the semester. There's not big assignments yet, generally. So uh, you just work on and just uh, do a little bit extra work on some of them. Get a 100%, get a 99%, uh, bump up your grade, grade a little bit. There's ways you can work around stuff. And especially, too, like if you truly have a professor that cares about you, which every single professor at Cedarville, I would argue, and I have experience that they it just feels like they really care about you. I've had uh, many great professors, which I'd actually love to have on here and talk about. They are here for you. They want to collaborate with you. They want to help you and they want to teach you the ways of collaborating in the workforce. So um, they will email with you. They will communicate. And they're just willing to work out stuff. Um, my one professor, Professor Mishni, he is the professor of the communication class I'm taking. He truly says, like, hey, I'm grading this like a workplace. Like if you were working for me and with me. And so I want to communicate like a workplace. So we don't even use Canvas. We use Microsoft Teams. We communicate on there. We upload to there. And it is a collaborative workplace. And he said, I 
probably will make mistakes in some grading, in some assignments, in some due dates, some scheduling items. Communicate that with me. Do the due diligence. Make sure that it is wrong. And then please tell me. Please let me know. Let's make this a collaborative workplace. And it's just awesome to experience that uh, here academically. I've been working in a marketing agency setting since eighth grade. Um, so I've under, I've understood that world and understanding the academic world. I know I was a little timid. To, I was like, oh, man, I feel like this isn't going to apply to the real world. But at Cedarville, I truly believe that they are trying to push for um, real world experience. They're trying to emulate that in the classroom, giving you a biblical worldview, preparing you to go out into the world. And so I think um, whenever you come to a school like Cedarville, you will be prepared whenever you leave, especially the biggest thing is whenever you go at it, whenever you are diligent, whenever you are grinding and working hard and actually going out there and putting yourself out there. That's a big thing. That's how I got started so fast. I was um, one professor, the newest professor here at Cedarville, the very chair of entrepreneurship. He was like, hey, guys, I got a meeting for this club called Q. And I was like, all right, I'm going to go to that. And then I went to that. And then they're like, hey, do you guys want to be officers? And I was like, yes, I want to do that. And then it just kept snowballing. It's like, oh, I'm a part of Q. I'm helping. I'm helping with the pitch. I'm doing content creation for them. Oh, man, I have a job now. I get to work for the Plaster School of Business and do their social media. And I just kept going and kept going to the point where I am now able to do what I love because I worked hard and I put myself out there and I've been diligent with it. And so I think regardless of what you do. Now, there are some exceptions where it's like if you're actually in – a major like nursing or engineering where it's like literally certifications and an exam that makes you able to do stuff just because like you have such an important role like you're a nurse you're saving lives so if you don't know something proper you might not and same for engineering you're building bridges and roads and stuff that like supports human life um, that's really important but if you put yourself out there that can help you put yourself in the proper job that you would want specifically for nursing so you may not want this type of nursing job you want this put yourself out there grind be diligent and that's how you get it so i think that's whenever you're at college it's a perfect opportunity to network to just take risks take all the risks do all the things get invested in as much as you can but don't overweigh yourself make sure you can figure out your time and plan it out that's why you need to be efficient so you can do as much as you can use the abcd model and then the OTA method, plan it out, figure it out, so then you're able to do all of these things. Um, uh, this spring semester, I've set a goal. Um, I'm only taking 13 credits, but I would like to work 15 to 20 hours. I really want to invest in all the stuff that I'm doing, plus the school business with social media, just helping others, uh, consulting. And it's exciting. Uh, some of the guys I've worked with, Cooper, Aaron, and I, I'm, re I'm just really excited for this group of us. We're all really working hard at what we do. Aaron and ultralight Ronnie has really been taking off. Um, he's gotten a lot of followers in the past few weeks since our podcast episode. It's just exciting to see. And uh, there's just a lot of opportunity out there, and I hope you guys will jump on it because our generation, we have everything set in front of us. There's so many tools to get there. There's so many avenues to make money to have a living um so then we can truly do what we want and what we love so guys thank you for uh just listening to me today it's just a solo podcast i appreciate you uh taking the time to just uh hear from me from my experience um it's only my first and second semester here at cedarville so in the future there will definitely be way more tips that i can give you i hope you can take something from this um, just apply it to yourself, apply it to your life, see if it'll be more efficient. Um, if you comment, maybe in a, a few weeks you've been doing this and you're like, man, this is really helping me, please comment and let me know. Uh, check out my Instagram. Uh, I post these smaller clips on there as well as on LinkedIn and on YouTube here. So maybe you don't have to always watch a full episode if you don't have the time. I don't want to waste your time. A part of being efficient is you need to allocate your time to what you need to do. So this is a 40-minute episode. I don't think you don't have to watch all of this to uh, use up all your time just listening to me here talk about a bunch of stuff. Um, so go there. You might hear some shorter tips. Hopefully it will help you with productivity uh, because this is what I'm really passionate about. I want to help people build their brand digitally. I want to help people be productive in what they're doing so they can do as much as they can and impact as many people as they can. And I truly just want to help people 
create to inspire and help others. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, please subscribe. And I will see you in the next one.